Five Nights at Freddy's is based on a video game series about an abandoned restaurant with creepy animatronic characters who kill security guards who aren't paying enough attention. I never played the games and have only seen about 10 minutes of gameplay, but if they're anything like this, they are messed up. It starts off with this guy trying to unscrew a grate. He gets it as something tries to get in. Why did that one not need to be unscrewed? Anyway, he can't figure out the door so he gets caught. And what the hell? Is this in the game? Then it cuts to Mike and his Nebraska poster, and his sister Abby. He works as a mall security guard and sees an adult grab a kid, so he just assumes that it's a kidnapping and beats the crap out of this guy. Well, it wasn't, so he got fired, although to be honest, he's lucky he didn't go to jail. So now Steve here needs to find him a new job. I am just trying to figure out who you are, Mr. Michael. Huh, I wonder why he didn't say his last name. I'm sure it's not because he's secretly the bad guy who's going to die horribly. And I'm not just saying that because it's Matthew Lillard in a horror movie. Anyway, Steve says he has a job for him as a nighttime security guard. But Mike can't do nights, so they pretend he's not going to take the job as if him taking this job isn't the entire point of this movie. Now he's getting evicted. At least he gets his sister a babysitter. Then Mike goes to bed and tries to dream about Nebraska, because I guess his little brother was kidnapped from there. The next day, he has a meeting with Abby's doctor and his aunt and her lawyer, because she wants custody of Abby. The doctor suggests if he wants to keep custody of Abby, he should find a job. So what a surprise, he decides to take the night guard job, as if it wasn't blatantly obvious he was going to do that from the start. On night one, he learns that he's going to be security for some abandoned restaurant from the 80s that has these creepy animatronic characters in it. You know, this is pretty easy. Just keep your eyes on the monitors and... I'm gonna guess that's what the games are about. First thing Mike does is watch this tape about this Chuck E. Cheese ripoff that doesn't serve a purpose other than to be creepy. After walking around for a bit and finding these creepy characters, he falls asleep on the job and dreams about Nebraska again. But this time these children of the corn looking kids show up, but they run off and he wakes up. At some diner, Mike's aunt is meeting with the babysitter because she hired her to find evidence that Mike is endangering Abby. What an asshole. But she didn't find anything, so the new plan is to break into this creepy restaurant and trash the place to get Mike fired. If they're planning a crime, why the hell is her lawyer there? He would be required by law to report this. Whatever, on night two, Mike is trying to get his Nebraska poster down and takes it to work, because I guess he thinks it's fine to sleep on the job. And dreams about the children of the corn again. What was with this weird blur thing on this kid's face? Whatever, they run and Mike catches one, but he gets cut and wakes up to everything freaking out. And a police officer showing up. And the cut he got in the dream happened in real life too. Is the Freddy in this Freddy Krueger? What the hell? Then the officer, Vanessa, says she hung out there as a kid. Then she just nonchalantly mentions some kids that went missing in the 80s. Then we get our first good look at these creepy ass animatronics. Like what happened to this fox? It is frightening. This... This is the best thing you've seen in your entire life? No, not even close. In the morning, Mike closes and is leaving, and now the babysitter group is breaking in. What the hell? Why? Mike is the night security guard. His job is to make sure the place is secure at night. What happens during the day when he's not there is not his problem. He's not going to get fired for people breaking in when he's not there. Why do they not break in at night when he's supposed to be working? So these assholes start smashing stuff and this guy finds a bird and a cupcake. Oh my god! Then this guy gets killed by a bunny. These things are freaking frightening. Is this part of the game? Then this guy locks himself in the security office and watches the monitors, which I know is part of the game. He tries to leave, but since he can't figure out doors, the frightening fox gets him. Now that everyone else is dead, the babysitter decides to check out what's going on, and finds Freddy Bear. Warmer. Oh yeah, let's go up to this creepy ass bear that is talking to- HOLY sh Because that seemed PG-13, what the f Back at their house, Abby finds the court papers and Vanessa shows up, because I guess she knows where they live? She found Mike's sleeping pills, but not several dead bodies. 
So Mike explains that his little brother was taken and they never found out who took him. So he uses the pills and Nebraska poster to search for overlooked details, because that won't come up later. That night, the babysitter isn't picking up. I wonder why. So Abby's going to work with Mike for night three. After cleaning up the restaurant, he falls asleep again and starts talking to Isaac here. I need your help. Help me remember the man who took my brother. If we show you, what will you give us? Anything. I'll give you anything you want. Because there's no way that can go wrong. Then he wakes up to Abby screaming because she's playing with these creepy animatronic things. What is wrong with this child? Seriously, who looks at this fox thing and thinks, yeah, that's my friend? That being said, Foxy is my favorite character. Anyway, that morning they go home and Mike looks like he never wants to think about that again. But Abby drew pictures of kids with the animatronics features. So he talks to her about it. So those, uh, those machines... My friends? Your friends? Are they... Ghosts? Of course. How else could they make the robot to move? Because that's not creepy at all. And to make it worse, she drew a picture of their brother getting taken because these dead kids told her about it and some yellow rabbit. Is this part of the lore of the game? What the hell? Now this wonderful guardian is going to take her back to the abandoned restaurant with the ghosts of the dead children who control giant animatronic robots in it so she can ask them about the driver of the car. On night 4, Vanessa is already there looking at pictures of kids and the yellow rabbit. Mike tries to talk to Abby about being safe around these things, but Vanessa is like, no, nah, it'll be fine, so they make a fort. Seriously though, the animatronics are so freaking good. And that's because Jim Henson's Creature Shop did them. And I'm sure these ghost children robots aren't going to try to kill them at all. Mike and Vanessa go looking for tablecloths because I guess she knows where those are. And there's an extra creepy robot back there. Don't. They're spring locks. They were designed to keep the animatronic parts in place so that a, a person could safely wear the suit. Let's see. Yeah, that completely seems safe. So glad you left a child alone with a group of them. Then Mike tells Vanessa about his brother plan, and Vanessa gets all upset about it. Meanwhile, Abby's having happy dance time and gets shocked by the Blue Bunny's guitar. So that's the end of that, and Mike calls his crazy aunt for help. So she babysits a pissed off Abby while Mike spends all day in town apparently since he left in the morning and it's night now, and then goes to work for night 5, where he falls asleep. And this absolute dickhead agrees to give the children of the corn Abby so that he can have happy family dreams every night. What an asshole. But he immediately regrets it and gets attacked. Then he wakes up in the face grinder chair, but since he's the main character, he gets out. Because that seems PG-13, and Mike is trapped. And Freddy goes to Mike's house to get Abby, because I guess they can leave the restaurant now? Can they do that in the game? I thought Mike's job was to keep people out, not keep the ghost children robots in. And why is he missing an ear and eye now? Screw it, Abby goes with him and she just doesn't give a shit that he killed her aunt. Meanwhile, Vanessa found Mike and took him to some police outpost, where she explains why the police never found the missing kids in the 80s. In the 80s, when those kids went missing, the police searched Freddy's from top to bottom. Every inch was accounted for, and they never found them. The man who took them was a very bad man. So a very clever man. He knew there's one place they'd never think to check because why would they? It's not just their ghosts that are inside of those machines. It's their bodies. What the f Is this the lore of this teen rated game? What the hell? Then they do this whole mystery thing about the killer. He influences them somehow. Who? Vanessa. But it's too late now. He knows that you're looking for him. You need to tell me who he is. He's my father. As if there hasn't been only one male character in this entire movie who's old enough to be her father. Wow. Matthew Lillard is old enough to be a father of a 30-year-old. That's really depressing. Anyway, Mike sneaks back into the restaurant. How did Freddy get his ear and eye back? As a bird takes Abby to the back, where it tries to shove her into one of the animatronics because I'm completely sure this PG-13 rated movie is gonna kill a kid. I seriously hate this trope. 
and what a surprise, she got rescued. Mike makes it back to the lobby, and this goddamn nightmare fuel comes out and kicks the crap out of him. And it's the same guy who kidnapped and killed his brother. No one tell me you have a sister. She will love it here. You, however, are finished. There isn't any blood on your knife. Calm down, Ghostface. Then he removes his mask, and who could have guessed it? It's the only male character in this entire movie who's old enough to be Vanessa's father. I've only seen like 10 minutes of gameplay of this entire series, and I figured out he was the killer from the first time I saw him as Steve. Then Vanessa shoots him, so Father Death here stabs her. And Abby makes this psycho drawing that shows the yellow rabbit killing the kids. So now the ghost child robots are pissed and about to kill him. Okay, I get the big robots have the dead kid's body in them, but how does that work with the cupcake? They've shown it's alive like the rest of them, but it's too small to fit a child into. Did he kill an infant and shove it in there? What did you do, Stu? Whatever, the cupcake bites his suit which activates the suit blades and kills him in the most PG-13 way possible. I guess Vanessa's still alive, so they take her out of there. Sometime later, Mike and Abby are home, and Abby wants to visit the dead child robots at the restaurant again. I was just thinking about my friends. They're all alone. Can we visit them sometime? They literally tried to murder you and are keeping their dying creator in a closet. So, no one cares about the missing job recruiter or the abandoned restaurant or that their aunt got murdered? No? Okay. I quite enjoyed this movie. Like I've said, I've never played the game, so I can't speak for how accurate the story is compared to the games or if any of the human characters are in them, but as a movie, it's not too bad. The twist that Steve Raglan was the killer and Garrett's kidnapper was really predictable. They could have helped that by introducing some more red herrings, or at least had some more characters who could have been the killer. I don't understand Vanessa's logic in handling Mike and Abby. She knew what was going on, but she never warned Mike about the animatronics being dangerous and then got upset about it. Then she says she tried to warn him in her own way, which she never really did. I also don't understand how Freddy left the restaurant and went to Abby's house without anyone noticing. And why was he missing an eye and ear, but he had them back when he got back to the restaurant? Do they heal when they're there? But if that's the case, why does Foxy look like he got hit with a grenade? The acting is really good for the most part. Josh Hutcherson is pretty good as Mike. He's great at playing the part of an overstressed brother trying to take care of his younger sister. He's not as good at fear acting during the horror scenes though. Piper Rubio is not good as Abby. Everything she says sounds like she was just told what to say right before and just repeated it. And she cannot convincingly sound scared at all. Matthew Lindlard is by far the best actor as Stephen Raglan and William Afton. He does his regular goofy weirdness when he's pretending to be Stephen Ragland, and he can show off his range by also doing a great job at portraying a psychopathic serial killer as William Afton. It reminds me of his horror movie roles at the turn of the millennium with Scream and 13 Ghost. It was awesome seeing him use this part of his talent again after over two decades. The visual effects are fantastic, and a huge contributor to that is that they decided to use Jim Henson's creature shot for animatronics over CGI. Since this series revolves around animatronic characters, there's no way they could have used CGI and made it look right. And Jim Henson's company does a fantastic job bringing these characters to life. Their movements are stinted and jagged, the way old animatronics from the 80s should be. They were really clever in the strategies they used to make the characters move. From having the puppeteers control the head and bodies, to having the stunt performers wear the costumes to walk and dance around while the heads were controlled remotely. I have no idea if this movie's story is accurate to the video games, but if it is, it's the most messed up story for a teen rated video game I have ever heard of. If you want to see an uncensored version of this video, or any of my other videos, check out my Patreon. If not, I appreciate you watching my video here too. Don't forget to do the YouTube stuff, and thanks for watching.